I'm not sure we are easily going to get a breakthrough because it's important to understand that a customs union is still a hard Brexit. Um, services are not covered, and that's 80% of our economy. Um, I suspect that there will be conservatives um, deeply concerned that you're not able to then go off and do trade deals if you're within a customs union. And I'm a little bit worried, actually, about the fact that the EU in future trade deals will be determining um, the rules and we won't really have a say. But nevertheless, there is a compromise there. But the key point is, because many people will feel that they didn't vote for that compromise, it's clear that there has to be a confirmatory ratification in the form of a referendum at that point. Are you saying that if there is a deal between the Labour Party and the Tory party that it doesn't have a referendum locked into it, you won't accept that? I won't accept that, but I would have thought the majority of the parliamentary Labour Party won't accept that. Having been to the meeting last week, it's clear that there is a mood in the party to accept the deal that emerges as long as it's put to referendum. That is, in a sense, the compromise. Now, for a lot of people, this is not very compromising. Let me put to you something that Emily Thornbury said very recently. She said the country, rightly, is absolutely divided. And real leadership is about bringing the country together. And in these circumstances, uh, with half the country having voted to leave the EU completely, uh, that means a compromise where we stay close to EU institutions, like the customs reunion, but we leave. And that is real leadership, and that is the compromise the country needs. But look, let's be clear on this. Um, if we're staying in a customs union, you can't go off and strike True. free trade deals. I'm not sure many leavers voted for that. If we went with Norway, which has its attractions, again, we would be a rule taker. I'm not sure many people voted for that. So clearly, the best thing to do when a deal emerges is to ask the country whether they like the deal. And I might say, Andrew, also... Going forward, this is not going to end. We still don't know where the arrival point is. We don't know where we're heading in That's terms of our future trade deal. It's completely blind. So the rows will continue now for many, many years to come. The best way to, to actually bring the country together is through a democratic process. I'm no. not saying that the, de that, the, that, the, that the referendum won't be rough. It will be a bit rough. Be but rough. at the end of it, we, we can act on what the country has said. You either act to implement the deal the following day or you move forward and you, and, yeah. you, and, you, and, you, and you remain in the European Union. Listening to the language at the moment, can I put it to you, it's going to be more than a little bit rough. On one side, we've got the language of treachery and betrayal and traitors and all of that. But on your side of the argument, the language has been quite tough too. I'm going to show you a clip about somebody you may recognise in full flow. I'm just looking over there at Winston Churchill. On the 30th of September 1938, he stood up in Parliament and he said we would not appease Hitler. I'm looking across to Nelson Mandela, who would not give in to apartheid. We say we will not give in to the ERG. We will not appease. We will not appease. By implication, you're comparing the ERG to the Nazi party, or, or at least to the South African racists. Now, whatever you think about the ERG, that was an unacceptable comparison, wasn't it? Andrew, I would say that that wasn't strong enough. Really? In 1938, there were allies who hatched a plan for Hitler to annex part of Czechoslovakia. And Churchill said no, and he stood alone. He did. We must not appease we're in a situation now, and let me just be clear, I'm an ethnic minority. We have in the ERG, in Jacobs Rees-Mogg, someone who is happy to put onto his web pages the horrible, racist AFD party, a party that's Islamophobic and on the far right of the German citizen. We ha they're happy to use the phrase Grand Wizard. KKK is what it evokes to me when I think mm. of that yeah. phrase and the Deep South. I'm sorry, but very, very seriously, of course we should not appease that. Of course we should not appease that. Jacob rees monk has been absolutely clear that he does not endorse the AFD and the Grand Wizard stuff. We don't know where that came from. It's a dangerous thing, surely, to accuse him we of do being know. close to we, Nazi ideology. We do know 
that Boris Johnson um, is with Steve Bannon, who is a white supremacist. We do know that there are links between Viktor Orban, Salvini and others. I'm not backing off on this. Never will I back on, off on this on behalf of my constituents. And the BBC should not allow this extreme hard right fascism to flourish. And often the, well, the, 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 the prettiest side of it, MPs. I don't care how elected they were, so was the far right in Germany. They're often elected, often giving a cover for the thugs on the ground. And I'm afraid when people are experiencing rising hate and extremism in this country, we must not concede ground. We must fight it and call it out for what it is. The problem is, this is what a second referendum is going to be like day after day, week after week. What kind of country are we going to be like at the end of this process? What kind of country are I mean, we going to be like if these people are running it? What kind of country are we going to be like when we head into a leadership race and some of them get their hands on the levers of the country? Where will this stop, Andrew? It may be well, that you will be fine in that country, but many of my constituents will not. And that's why I stand firm. You would say that Tory MPs like Boris Johnson and Jacob Rees-Mogg are equivalent to Nazis. Ask Boris Johnson why he's hanging out with Steve Bannon. So, Ask him that question. Because he should Because, be. you see, you're sticking by that proposition. A lot of people watching this will be absolutely outraged by that. I don't care how outraged they are. I think that'll be a minority if they've got any sense. Because British soldiers in this country died fighting this thuggery and extremism. And here we are in 2019 and people are bringing it into the mainstream for their own political advantage. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We can't have it. Let